Good morning, guys, and happy Monday. Here we are at a new week, um, this much closer to spring break, so we're getting there. Okay, today we are going to be studying the life and music of a composer named Franz Schubert. And Schubert um, was kind of another one of these composers like Beethoven who divided the years between the classical period and the romantic period. So he was definitely on the early side of the romantic period, which is why we will be um, learning about him first. Um, you will find um, a file that is linked in the Google form, but also um, in your Google Classroom that should have um, all this information that I'm about to give to you so you can read it along. Maybe you can kind of split your screen between me and that document. Um, but otherwise, let's learn about Franz Schubert. Okay, first things first. When you look at his picture in the upper left-hand corner of the first page, he looks very familiar. And I can't figure out who I think he looks like. But I think it's possible that it's someone at school, like a teacher at school. Could that be? Think about that. Maybe I'll put a place on the form for you to say who you think this picture looks like. I mean, so familiar. It's kind of freaking me out. Anyway, he was born um, on January 31st, 1797 in Vienna, where lots of things have taken place already, right? And then he died um, on November 19, 1828, also in Vienna. Um, his father was a school teacher, and everyone in the Schubert family enjoyed and played music. Um, Franz received music lessons from his father and his older brothers, and as a child, he attended a boy choir school where he sang in the choir and played violin in the orchestra, and he began to compose while he was a student. So this is following the trajectory of tons of the other composers that we have learned about already. The Boy Choir School gave Franz an excellent musical education. Um, after graduation at age 17, he taught music at the same school where his father taught. He now began to spend all of his nights composing. He wrote rapidly, not caring whether his music, whether or not his music would be performed. After two years, he left this teaching position and moved in with friends to devote nearly all of his time to composing. He had virtually no income and began neglecting his health by eating poorly and sleeping very little. Does this sound like Mozart or what? Yeah. Eventually, Schubert realized he needed a steady source of income. So in 1818, when he was 21, he took a job as a music teacher at the summer home of Count Esterhazy. Do you recognize that name? He was the same count who had supported Franz Joseph Haydn for like his whole career. Here, Schubert made many influential friends and met many important court musicians and composers who could have been helpful in getting his music performed. But he was unable to develop these friendships and most of his music remained unperformed outside the Esterhazy Palace. Count Esterhazy offered him the post of court organist, but Schubert declined because he didn't like the schedule. He resigned his position with the Count after just two years. By age 23, he had written over 500 musical works, but only two had ever been performed in public. For years, he had spent his mornings composing, his afternoons with friends, and his nights partying. He was always short of money and lived in terrible conditions and his health began to fail. In March of 1828, Friends put together a concert devoted exclusively to Schubert's music. It was well received by the audience and critics, and his friends told him that success was near. Unfortunately, he died eight months later at the age of 31. Ten years after Schubert's death, another composer, Robert Schumann, began studying Schubert's music and organized performances of his orchestral music. The performances were very successful and created tremendous interest in Schubert's music. One of his most famous works is the, li the listening example for this particular packet that you have, his Symphony No. 8. It was unfinished at the time of his death and eventually became known as the Unfinished Symphony. It was not premiered until 50 years after his death. Other symphonies written by Schubert were discovered and performed much later. 
Writing music was Franz Schubert's only goal in life. He had no business sense and lived in poverty for most of his adult life. He composed rapidly and didn't care about the value of his music or whether or not it would ever be performed. Um, I feel like that is such, um, that's such a strange notion. I think about, you know, these days, what musicians want. And I think to them, they don't even care really about the content of the music, whether it's good music, you know, they just want to be famous. Like they'll just do anything to get their stuff out there and get famous and go viral or whatever. Um, Schubert was literally the opposite of this. All he wanted to do was write the music and he just didn't even care if it ever got performed. That's such a strange thought. Um, and very foreign to our sense of what being a musician really is or being a music writer really is. So um, in the next video, we will talk about what was going on in the world during the lifetime of Franz Schubert.